Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Thursday, which means it's time for a magic stuff. And today I'm back with another one of the three best trick series. And uh, and this is one that's been requested an awful lot. It's probably one that I'm going to do a few parts of uh, when, I, uh, when, I, when I do these series on something that, uh, you know, there's a lot of different variations of. I normally do sort of two or three videos. And I am, of course, talking about ace assemblies. So this is going to be three ace assemblies that you've probably never seen before that are pretty awesome. Uh, all three of these ace assemblies use regular decks of cards. There's no gaffes, there's no gimmicks. And uh, all three of them I've used in my professional working repertoire for many, many years. Now, eight assemblies are really cool. I know some people that kind of shy away from them, but as long as you frame them right, they can be really magical. For the right crowd, you know, somebody who's super into cards or gambling, they absolutely get behind this. And as long as you frame the impossibility of them, they work really well and they're always really good. And it's a great routine to do. You know, you've just produced four aces for example then maybe you've done some twisting the aces style routines maybe you've done a last trick of dot daily variation then you go into your ace assembly and then you finish off with travelers or something there's it's it, it makes a really nice set anyway i'm going to talk about three of them and these are all older items that have been around a very long time you know what it's like in magic if it's old it's new i'm willing to bet a lot of people haven't seen these before uh, but they are super awesome. So let's have a look at the first ace assembly that you've never seen before. Okay, so the first ace assembly that you've probably never seen before that we're going to be talking about is Hitchcock Aces by Darwin Ortiz. Now, anybody who watches this channel for any uh, length of time will know that I'm a big Darwin Ortiz fan. The guy is an absolute legend. And he has created more super commercial close-up magic uh, both normal magic and gambling themed magic than pretty much anybody. I think the next closest is Jason Ladani, uh, but I think Darwin Ortiz is, is still leading the pack when it comes to super commercial close-up magic. He, he's absolutely not got a problem doing stuff that's self-working, but he's also, he can do knuckle-busting routines like the best of them. Hitchcock Aces is one of my favourite routines. It was one of his very early routines that he put out many, many years ago. I think it was in his very first book, possibly, but it's still just as good today. Now, you can get this on his, uh, uh, on his DVD set, which I think is available as a download now. It's a cool trick, and it's, a, it's what's nice about this particular Ace Assembly is it addresses a problem that a lot of people have with Ace Assemblies. And the problem that a lot of people have with Ace Assemblies is there's no finale. There's no end. It's kind of like the first ace is going gonna, is gonna to travel, the second ace is going to travel, the third ace is going to travel. End of trick. It's kind of anticlimactic. Well, in this routine, Darwin has used a very clever routining to put together a kicker ending so that when the ace assembly has happened, there's then something else that happens on top of it as well. Uh, it's a regular uh, deck of cards. It's a shuffle deck of cards in use. There is a setup. There's a very small setup, but I do this all of the time, and I do the setup as I'm taking the aces out the deck. So as I'm taking the aces out the deck, uh, you need a four-card setup, and I'll just cull those four cards. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. If you don't want to do the cull, you are going to need to have a four-card setup, which takes about 10 seconds to put together. Um, let me perform the routine for you, first of all. So I'm going to give you a performance of Hitchcock Aces so you can see exactly how it plays, and then when I've performed it, we'll talk about why it's so good. Okay, so I've got Sarah behind the camera. She's going to help me with this one. Is that okay, Sarah? Am I? You are. Okay. You're going to lie on the table. I'm going to saw you in half. It's going to be uh, amazing. No. Uh, we're going to do something with four aces. This is called Hitchcock Aces. And it's by one of my favorite magicians. I think I've seen that before. Yeah, I think I've done it for you a few times. I think we did it on a Magic Live a little while ago, yeah, about a year or two ago. Uh, it's by Darwin Ortiz, who's one of my favorite magicians. Okay. So there you go. And it uses... Um, <clears throat> four aces. It uses four aces, hence the name Hitchcock Aces. It uses four aces. Um, and the idea is really simple. The idea is, is actually really simple. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going uh, to lay the aces out. So we've got the ace of diamonds, we've got the ace of hearts. The ace of spades is the leader ace. That one goes there. That's the only one that stays face up. Right. And, uh, and the ace of clubs goes face down. So we have one, two, three aces face down, one ace face up. Remember, these stay face down. This one over here stays face up. Now, as well as that, we need 12 cards. So one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The rest of the deck's not important. The only important thing are the cards right here. Okay. 
So 12 cards, uh, four aces, and that's all we need. Now I'm going to take an, uh, an indifferent card. That's a card that doesn't care. Uh, we're going to take this one here, the, uh, the two. doesn't really matter what it is. It goes right here on the leader ace. And then I take three more cards and I put them over here. So you know three cards went on that, on that yeah. ace. And you know the two of hearts went there. Now look, I do this in slow motion. All I have to do is this. That's one. That is two. That is three. And when I snap, now we have the two of hearts over there. And if the mm -hmm. two of hearts is over there, the first ace has actually jumped across. Which is kind of weird and maybe didn't know what was going to happen. So I'm going to do it again for you. Now this time you know exactly what's going to happen. We're going to take the, uh, the queen this time. Again, it doesn't really matter. Now you know the queen of clubs is there because you saw it. Likewise, you know the ace of diamonds is there because you saw it. Yeah. These three cards go on here like this. We'll put those over there. Now you remember over here we had the, uh, we had the ace of diamonds, didn't we? Don't yeah. worry about these Good three. Ace, yeah. yeah. Watch hearts. if I just flick. No, the, uh, yeah, sorry, the ace of hearts. If I flick, now we've got the queen of clubs clubs there which was over there which means over here now we have the next ace mm. it's kind of weird leaves us <clears throat> with one final ace now you know as well as me what that final ace is it's over here it's the ace of clubs so i'm going to go in slow motion for this one you know what's going to happen the ace of clubs goes over there yeah. these aces go over there just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put three eight, three cards right there onto that ace, and yeah. we need to put a card that doesn't matter. We'll put the queen of spades over there onto that one. Now, if I could make that last ace go across, would that be good? If I could make the final okay, ace drop, yeah. that'd be great, right? But I need to do something even better. If I snap my fingers, I can actually go in reverse, and instead of making the last ace jump across, I can make all four aces jump over here. And if the four aces are over here. Well, what's, what's there? Well, the question is, how did I end up with one, two, three, mm. four kings? And that is Hitchcock Aces. So that's Hitchcock Aces. Like I say, that kicker ending at the end with the kings is super good. It really, really is. And, and to be honest, I think this is one of my favourite uses of the down under deal. When the first ace disappears and you've got that down under deal moment, I think that's a really clever use of that slight. Uh, there's a few things to like about this. Like I say, it's a shuffle deck of cards in use. You don't need a table because all of the layouts you can actually do into spectators' hands. If you're doing mix and mingle and you've got like four people with you, you can actually give the cards out to various different people that, are, that you're surrounded with. That's a very easy thing to do. Um, and what I really like is, again, with a lot of ace assemblies, there's no focus on, on, on what the card is before it turns into an ace. But with each one of these, that's not the case. You kind of point out, right, this is a two of hearts. Watch. And then you show that this ace here has turned into the two of hearts which means that this two of hearts now has to become the ace. So that as each ace travels, it almost becomes like a mini transposition, if that kind of makes sense. Um, and, and, and I like the structure of how each ace appears. So the first ace appears, uh, and then the second ace, they're burning your hands even closer, and you've got that moment where it happens immediately. And then the final ace, you've got that kicker ending, because just when they think they know what's happening, and they're watching for that final ace to jump across, you have that moment where all all of the aces go back over to the uh, to the original ace and then you've got the appearance of the kings so it's a really commercial routine there's a lot of backfires in there there's a lot of moments that make really uh, a lot of sense a lot of logical sense it's not that difficult to do it's not the easiest routine in the world for sure but there's no palming or anything like that which is normally the thing that scares a lot of people off you are going to have to do a multiple top change at one point towards the end of the routine and there are um you know some uh, some double lifts and so on and so forth but it's not the most difficult routine in the world and uh, and it's really really cool it really is when you've got that moment where they're expecting that final ace to go across and you've got all three aces kicked back honestly that kills people it really does and then you show that you've got the kings brilliant the other nice thing about this is because you end up with four kings and four aces you can go into any routine that requires four kings and four aces so if you've got like uh, a follow the leader style presentation or a lot of the time, for sure, I was following this with Paul Harris's uh, instant uh, reset uh, because reset is a great thing to follow it with because you've got the aces and the kings and then you go into the aces and the kings changing places and then having another backfire in there as well. Uh, and by having those eight cards out on the table, it allows you to put the deck to one side 
and then focus on that particular routine. So from a transitional point of view, there's a lot going on here. It really ticks the boxes in a lot of different ways. So there you go, that's Hitchcock Aces. It's by Darwin Ortiz. Um, you can learn it, as I say, I, I learned it from his, from his first book and I think he put an updated handling in his second book. Might not have, I'm not too sure, but it's definitely on his DVD set that was brought out many, many years ago that is now available as a download. You can go check it out, I'll put a link in the description down below. Now let's have a look at the second Ace Assembly you've probably never seen before. So the second Ace Assembly you've probably never seen before is Stealth Aces by John Carey, my friend John Carey. Uh, John is an incredible magician. He is an incredible magician. I want to make that very clear that what John can't do with a deck of cards uh, isn't worth talking about. And one of John's strengths is streamlining routines. So even though he can knuckle bust with the best of them, he has an innate ability to take a routine and eliminate all of the moves out of it, making it uh, accessible to pretty much anybody, even new people into card magic find John's material very accessible because he'll replace complicated sleight of hand with subtleties, which is just really great. Uh, this is no exception. Now, this is how good this trick is. When John Bannon published uh, kind of an extended lecture notes, which me and Ryland actually reviewed on the review show a little while ago, um, he actually included John Carey's um, uh, Stealth Aces in that booklet. So you can actually learn that from the John, John Bannon book. And uh, that's a huge compliment that John's got this booklet coming out and, and he wants John's routine in there. And, and I think one of the reasons is, A, the routine is absolutely amazing, but two, um, John, uh, John Carey has taken one of John Bannon's moves and applied it to this routine in such a really good way. Uh, let me perform Stealth Aces for you, first of all, so you can see the genius behind it. And it is genius, and then we'll talk about why it's so good. So I still have Sarah behind the camera for this one. Uh, you're going to help me again. Is that all right, Sarah? Yeah. Now, as this is a video on the three best ace assemblies of all time, I think you can guess mm -hmm. what are the four ace cards I'm taking out right now, right? I'm taking out the four aces. Yep. So we've got the ace of clubs, we've got the ace of hearts, we have the ace of diamonds, and finally we have the ace of spades. Now, test. You've seen enough magic tricks. I think you should know. Uh, do you know which ace is the leader ace? Mm, ace of... Spades. Very good. The Ace of Spades is the leader ace. Um, now, if, uh, if you were on this side of the camera, I would at this point give you the deck to shuffle and you would deal 12 cards onto the table. Is it okay if I deal them for you? Go on. Uh, thanks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now, the rest of the cards aren't important. We're going to put those to one side. Uh, the only important thing are the 12 cards and the four aces. Now, I want you to watch to make sure I don't do anything sneaky or dodgy. I'm going to do something sneaky or dodgy, but uh, uh, hopefully you won't catch me. The idea is I take three, uh, because we're 12 cards, we can make three packets of three cards, right? Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put three cards right here on this, uh, right here. I'm going to take three cards, and I'm going to put three cards here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take three cards, and I'm going to put three cards right here. And then finally, I'm going to take these three cards and put these three cards right here. Here. And then the aces, they go one on top of each pile. Uh, now, you get to choose. Do you want me to put the aces on top of each pile or underneath each pile? It's under. under. So we're going to put that ace right there under that pile, that ace right there underneath that pile, that ace underneath that pile, and this one here, the leader ace, that goes there. Now, because this is the leader ace, we're going to put that ace over there. You would hold it in between your hands. Okay. And the idea is to watch with no moves and no sleight of hand. I just do this. And it's done because now over here I have one, two, three, four cards, no ace. Right. Over here I have one, two, three, four cards, no ace. Over here I have one, two, three, four cards, no ace. And when you look in your hand, you'll realize over here you have the one, two, three, four aces. And that is Stealth Aces by John Carey. So that's the, third, that's the routine. Now I want to say this allows you to super focus on the presentation. So th there's, there's hardly any moves in this. There's, there's one move that happens towards the end of the routine, and that is the only move in the whole trick. Outside of that move, there's nothing that you need to do with that deck of cards. Absolutely nothing. 
Um, he's using a really clever subtlety along with time misdirection in order to achieve the whole thing. It's just so satisfying when you actually perform this routine because you are so far ahead of the audience, it's ridiculous. Now, the nice thing about this is they see all three cards going down. They see that it's a shuffle deck of cards in use, this is. You can tell the spectator to take out four aces, take out 12 cards, give them to you, and don't let you touch the rest of the deck. There's no extras, there's no gimmicks, there's no nothing, which is a really nice thing. Um, secondly, I love that the aces get put to one side you show the you show the um, you show the twelve cards, and you openly deal them into four packets. Everybody is convinced that there are four packets of cards there with three cards in each one. And then you take the aces one at a time. You just drop them onto the piles. And I like that little moment there where you say, "Do you want them to go underneath or on top?" Because it makes absolutely no difference to the routine, but it feels like you're making it. It's making it more interactive. It feels like you're giving people a, a, a choice that's important. Whilst the actual fact it's not important at all. Um, and then immediately you can you're done. And there's a few nice options with this. You can pick up each packet and deal them through one at a time, like I did. Um, or if you want to, you can uh, you can assemble the packet so you've got 12 cards and then hand them to the spectator get them to hold them and then they spread them out and the aces have gone presentationally there's a lot of different options here there's a lot of different ways to show that those aces have gone and then obviously they turn over or they have a look at the cards that their hand's been on the whole time and they've got the four aces uh, it's an instant reset because there's no reset because it's a regular shuffle deck of cards in use it's very easy to do again uh, you don't really need a table. I mean, it, I performed it with a table, and I think most people do. But you can routine it if you wanted to do to do it without a table. And uh, it's a very engaging plot. It really is. Uh, and because it's so easy, it allows you to really focus on the presentational side of things. Um, so there you go. That is uh, Stealth Aces, uh, which is the John Carey routine. I think it's in one of John's books. But it's also, uh, you can learn it from John Bannon's, one of John Bannon's latest lecture notes. Right, let's have a look at the final ace assembly that you've probably never seen before. So the final ace assembly you've probably never seen before. This is the last one. Uh, and is, is called the Atomic Ace Assembly. And uh, this is mine. So this is something I created probably about 10 years ago now. This went into a very old ebook that's not been available for a very long time. Uh, and it's a really cool ace assembly. It's one that I've done a lot. It's probably a little bit more difficult than the other two that I actually showed you uh, because you have got a few moves that magicians feel are kind of uh, tricky in there. So there's a, um, a Vernon, uh, a Vernon sub, uh, transfer and there's a side steal and a couple of other moves in there that are a little bit tricky. But... I love this routine and I will always do this routine and I love it for a few different things, for a few different reasons. Let me perform it for you first of all uh, and then I'll explain why I love it so much. Okay, so Sarah's going to help me uh, with one more ace assembly and this one uh, I hope she thinks is the best because it's my own, it's my own ace assembly. Mm, it's called we'll the, see. <laughs> we'll see. Always a critic, right? This one's called the Atomic Assembly, the Atomic Ace Assembly. And it uses uh, four aces, so we're going to take those four aces out of the deck. This is a shuffled deck in use. Four aces are taken out of the deck. We have the, uh, the clubs, the hearts, the spades and the diamonds. We will get to that in a little bit. Now, as well as that, we need 12 cards. Uh, and again, if you were here, you in front of the camera, you could have shuffled these and checked them out and made sure they were okay. Uh, but I'm just going to take out the 12 cards for you. Uh, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'll let everyone see that they're all there. They're all different. So, uh, 12 cards and 4 aces, okay. right? Now, before I do anything, I'm going to take the aces and just put them to one side for a minute so you can see I'm not going to cheat, okay? Right. And what I'm going to do, and I want to watch carefully, burn my hands, make sure I'm not cheating. I'm going to take 3 cards and put them over there, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put 1, 2, 3 cards over there. I'm going to put one, two, three cards over there. And then finally, I'm going to put one, two, whoops, there you go, three cards there. One, two, three cards there. Cool. Okay. So three piles, yeah. uh, sorry, four piles with three cards in each one. 
Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. Because it's really important that you don't think I'm going to cheat with this. Now, you remember over here, we've got the four aces, the clubs, mm -hmm. hearts, spades, diamonds. I'm going to put one of these aces on top of each pile. So uh, the ace of spades, which is the leader ace, that goes there. Uh, this ace goes here, this ace goes here, and this ace goes here. So we have uh, the four aces, one on top of each pile. But over here, we have the ace of spades, right? Yeah. Now, what I want you to do, this is going to be the leader packet. So I want you to watch the leader packet very, very carefully. Um, I'm going to start with this one here. Now, I want you to watch. Watch these four cards. The ace is on top. If I give a little twist and snap my fingers, when I do, that first ace disappears completely without leaving a trace. Now, what's actually happening is the aces are actually jumping over here into this packet. Now, you probably don't believe me, but I'll do it again. I've still got this packet and this packet to go. So watch this one next. If I just snap, now we've got one, two, three, four cards. The ace has disappeared. That's the second one gone. That leaves us with, uh, with one final packet. This is the final ace. If I just snap my fingers, going, 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 gone. That's the last one. All of the aces have disappeared. Where have they gone? Well, at this point, you could turn these over yourself and you will realize that you have over here the one, two, three, four aces. And that's the Atomic Ace Assembly. So there you go. That's the Atomic Ace Assembly. There's a few reasons why I like this. And first of all, I really like this because, the, again, it's a shuffle deck of cards in use, like the, stealth ace, uh, like the Stealth Aces before. There's no gimmicks, there's no setup, there's no nothing. You're only using 12 cards and four aces. So the, the spectator could literally give you those cards and hold on to the rest of the deck. Now, what I like about it is you show the four aces, you put them down, you show the 12 cards, and you say, I'm going to put the four aces out of the way. And you do put the four aces out of the way. Now, in most ace assemblies, when those aces go out of the way, they're no longer the aces, and you can't show them at that point. But with this routine, you are able to still show those aces, which is really cool. And it's very clean. Now, it, uh, you do need a table for this, but you don't need a, uh, a, a soft surface. It can work on any table. This is one that I like performing an awful lot in bars or mix and mingle. You know mix and mingle where you've got those high tables that everyone sits around? It's perfect for that sort of thing. Um, you then take the, uh, the rest of the cards and you very, very cleanly make four piles of three cards. And remember, there are no... Um, there are no extras in this. There are genuinely just 12 cards and they see you making these three piles. And then you pick up the aces and you show them at this point. So once the piles have done, you show the four aces and you very cleanly just drop one on each packet. And then you say that you're going to make them jump over there one at a time. And you pick up the first packet and you do the vanish and you show the first ace is gone. And you point out that it's over there, but they see an indifferent card at this point. So they can see, and that's a big difference because normally in most ace assemblies, once the ace packet has been, uh, that, once you've designated where the ace is going to end up, you can't show that packet. I mean, there's a few out there and we're going to be talking about other routines that do this in the future. Randy Wakeman has got a couple of different things like this and there's a few others. But, but I love the moment of being able to show that the, that the aces aren't there yet. It's a really nice subtlety. You then take the next uh, packet and you deal through those and you show they're gone. You show the next packet's gone. And then the nice thing is because of how the routine's constructed, they can pick up that final packet and deal through it themselves and show the four aces. So I really like the construction of this routine. You're really far ahead and it, it did what I set out to achieve with this particular routine. And what I wanted to achieve is I wanted it so that I could show the aces just before I put them out on the piles, I can show the aces. And you've got that moment. Even after the piles are done, you've got those aces. I wanted it so that you could show that not all the aces are there because they can see an indifferent card, even when the aces start vanishing. Well, we've got that as well, which is absolutely great. I didn't want any extras or any gimmicks. There's no extras, no gimmicks. Um, so, so it ticks all of the boxes for me. Now, the thing with card magic is it's very subjective. And what I mean by that is, um, for me this ticks all the boxes, right? But the boxes that I wanted to tick when creating a routine like this, they might not be the boxes that you wanted to tick. In other words, what's important to, for me in this type of routine might not be what's important for you. Um, but having had experience of performing this for years and years and years, I just love, I hammer home the moments. You know, I hammer home when I'm performing it to layman. You know, right, the aces, we're gonna take the aces. You can see the aces here, one's gone top. They are convinced that one ace is on top of each pile. So it's a really cool routine. I absolutely love performing it. Again, it makes a great transition piece. It's an instant reset because there's no, um, 
um, because there's no setup, you know, so it's a regular shuffle deck of cards. And, uh, and like I say, it is the hardest routine of the three, but even though it's the hardest routine, it's not even that difficult, really. Um, as long as you can do a side steal and a Vernon transfer, you're kind of good to go. Those are the two moves that stand out as being a little bit tricky. Um, so there you go. That is the Atomic Ace Assembly. You can't really get this anywhere. I'm considering putting it on Netflix. I haven't filmed it for Netflix yet. I've, I've performed this for uh, Magic Buddies at lectures and conventions for years, and everybody always loves it. And I think that a lot of people would like to see it on Netflix, but it's not been filmed for it yet. Let me know down below if you'd like to see me put it on Netflix. You can't get the uh, the ebook anymore, but if you want to see it on Netflix, it's super easy to film it. Um, because all of the slights that are built into this are already explained in the slight school. Anyway, that's that. Um, that is the Atomic Ace Assembly by me, Craig Petty. So there you go, guys. That is three Ace Assemblies that you've probably never seen before. Three pretty awesome Ace Assemblies. John Carey, uh, uh, Darwin Ortiz, and myself. You know, three good creators of card magic, I think. Well, two good creators of card magic and me. Uh, do me a favor. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Would you like to see a follow-up? Would you like to see another one of these Ace Assemblies where I delve even deeper, go back into the old school stuff, go look at Vernon, go look at Dingle, go look at, uh, you know, people like Marlowe. Look at that. I mean, there's, there's so many Ace Assemblies out there. If you want me to highlight some other ones, I'm more than happy to. I kind of collect Ace Assemblies. It's sad, but it's it's true. So if you want me to follow up with another one of these, please let me know. And also don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, you know what you got to do. You just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow. I'm going to be back uh, Friday with a magic rant at nine o'clock. At six o'clock, we've got a magic live. And at two o'clock, we've got a short. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV. <laughs>